Hey guys, I just wanna give y'all a really quick shout out because y'all are the only reason I'm looking half decent because of these YouTube videos. You're welcome for your dream becoming a reality. Miss Chacon has a YouTube now, yay! But also, thanks that I'm not looking like a total bum during this quarantine, cause yeah. <laughs> With that said, let's get started. Uh, today, lesson 3.9, distance on a coordinate plane. Okay, it says, the map of Foggy Mountain Park is marked on a coordinate plane of units of one mile. There are two campgrounds in the park. Camp one is located at negative four comma three, and camp two is located at five three. How far is camp one to camp two? Starting with step one, it says graph the points. Again, we're gonna start on our origin. I'm so sorry I don't have the little cubes like you do, but you can start there because you actually have the lines. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go negative four. So one, two, three, four, because remember we always start with our X first. And then I'm gonna go positive three. One, two, three. So it's around there-ish. That is camp one. The second camp is five, three. Start at your origin, zero, zero. Now count positive five. One, two, three, four, five. Then we're gonna count positive three. One, two, three. We're going to skip step two and step three, and I'm gonna show you two different ways that we can find the answer. The first way is by finding our absolute values. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see that, hey, they're the same on this line. So I'm gonna find the distance from here to zero. This one was five comma three. And this one was negative four comma three. Because the y are the same, we're not gonna deal with those. What we're looking at is the x. The absolute value of five gives us five. And the absolute value of negative four gives us four. To find the distance between them, all we would have to do would be to add those absolute values. So five plus four gives us nine. The other way to do it, and honestly, this is my favorite way, is to count your loops. I always tell you guys, count your loops, and you guys, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I think this is honestly the easiest, at least for me. But again, feel free to use whatever method you choose. So here we're on five, three, so I'm gonna count my bubbles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine loops, which means that they are nine apart. On the bottom, step four. So the distance from camp one to camp two is nine miles. On number one, it says explain how you could use absolute value to find the distance from camp one to the eagle nest. What is the distance? Now, eagle nest is actually, if you count it, remember we count our X first, so it's five on the X. I don't even count that one, two, three, four, five, five on the X over here. And then it's a negative two, so right here. Looking at yours, I can see that it is on positive five on the X line first, remember? And then it's negative two on the Y line. Now remember, the fives are the same. So what we're gonna be looking at is this negative two and this positive three. I'm gonna do both methods and you can pick whichever one you want. So again, absolute value of negative two plus the absolute value of three is really saying two plus three, which gives us five. That's the difference. And if I wanted to count my loops, I would count one, two, three, four, five. Five loops. For example one, you would say you would find the absolute value and add them together. That's your answer. 
Okay, example on page 132. I'm gonna use a whole bunch of colors and that way you can see what we're doing. What I did was I put the graph right here, kind of like how you guys like it. Again, yours is a lot nicer because they actually have the numbers and they have the lines and the grid and everything for you so you can see everything. I put it the same as they were. Notice, sixth grade, they are counting by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten. They are not counting by ones anymore. You need to be very careful that you see what the number line is counting by. So I have our dots already. We are set to get started. Okay, A says, step one, look at the coordinates on the plane. We're looking at points A and B to find the distance between the pair on the coordinate plane. What we would do, honestly, for this one, I would say counter loops. That's the easiest to do. So look at this. The Y is the same. So we're actually gonna look at these ones. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna count our loops. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Again, you have your grid, it looks a lot nicer. That's one, two, three, four, five loops. That is the difference. So instead of doing all of that, all you need to do is, so the distance from A to B is five units. Moving over to points C and D, again, I suggest counting your loops. The absolute value only works when they are on different sides, like of, if they're crossing the X axis or the Y axis. If one point is over here and the other one's over here, or one's over here and one's over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. All right, other than that, I would suggest counting your loops or subtracting your absolute values. But honestly, stick to counting your loops. Let's get to it, points C and D. Looking at them, the X is the same. So what we're gonna do is count our loops between 10 and three. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Let's count our loops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is the unit distance between points C and D. Step three, so the distance between C and D is seven units. Sixth grade, if something didn't make sense to you, I suggest that you not be lazy, don't waste your time, and skip to the parent lessons so that way you can see more examples, because as you can see, I already have things set up to explain to your parents what you're doing today. With that being said, you can go ahead and skip 17 and 18 today. Again, you're skipping 17 and 18 today. Panda, 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 family productions. Hello parents, hola padres. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do the sixth grade lesson. Hoy les voy a enseñar cómo hacer la lección del sexto grado. Now, I have been showing the kids how to find the relationship or the distance between points. Le he estado enseñando a los niños cómo encontrar la distancia entre puntos. Um, I'm gonna start with these two, the ones in black. Voy a comenzar con estos que están en color negro. There are two different ways that they can find an answer when they cross across a line. Hay dos maneras que pueden encontrar la respuesta solo si cruzan por la línea. I'm gonna show you the very first method with this one, which involves absolute values. Les voy a enseñar el primer método que usa valores absolutos. What I've shown the kids, lo que les enseñé a los niños es that we need to look at the number that is the same. Vamos a ver el número que es el mismo. Right here, it would be three. Aquí sería el tres. Then we're gonna look at the one that's different. Y luego voy a encontrar el que es diferente. I'm gonna find the absolute value. Voy a encontrar el valor absoluto. Which here would be one, aquí sería uno, and here would be two. And then I'm gonna add them. Y luego los voy a agregar which in this case would be three, que en este caso sería tres. So three is the distance between these two points. Entonces tres es la distancia entre estos dos puntos. Now, the other way to do it, which honestly is my favorite method, la otra manera que lo pueden usar, que honestamente es mi método favorito, would be to count the spaces, que sería contar los espacios para llegar al otro punto. Let me show you what I mean. Les voy a enseñar lo, lo que quiero decir. 
We're going to start here and we're just going to count until we get down. Vamos a comenzar en un punto y vamos a contar hasta que llegamos al otro. One, two, three, four. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. So right there, the distance is four. Allí la distancia es cuatro. I suggested to the kids that when they had points that were on the same coordinate plane, like the same side, yo les sugería a los niños que cuando tienen dos puntos que están en el mismo cuadro, en el mismo lado, that they count their loops, que cuenten sus um, puntos hasta llegar ahí, sus cuadros. Um, just because the absolute value, if you add them every time, it doesn't make sense, and sometimes it would be a little bit difficult. You can do it, but they'd have to remember to subtract. Si lo pueden hacer con los valores absolutos, pero tendrían que encontrar la diferencia. So let me show you what I mean. These two are the same. Estos dos son los mismos. So we're going to focus on these two numbers. Vamos a enfocarnos en estos dos números. Absolute value of 4 is 4. El valor absoluto de 4 es 4. And the absolute value of 1 is 1. Y el valor absoluto de 1 es 1. Subtract these, encontrar la diferencia, gives us 3. Nos da 3. All right? Now, on this one, what we would do con este, lo que haríamos would be count our points. Encontrar cuáles cuadros son. So, 1, 2, 3. Ahí es 3 también. As always, parents, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. You can text me, you can email me, you can access me on Google Hangouts, whatever works for you. I am here to help you guys. And for anyone else watching, you can drop me a comment and I would be more than happy to respond to you with any other help that we have on any of our lessons or math concepts. Padres, como siempre, yo estoy disponible para ustedes. Me pueden textear, me pueden mandar correo electrónico, me pueden mandar mensaje por Google Hangouts. Cualquier manera sea más fácil para ustedes, yo estoy disponible para ustedes. Y para personas que no están en mi clase, me pueden dejar un comentario abajo del video y los puedo contactar a ustedes con cualquier duda que tengan en cualquier concepto de matemáticas o lección que estamos haciendo. Have a fabulous day. Que tengan un día fabuloso.